Good evening everyone, time for another Silver Update. This is the daily chart of Apple stock provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. Now if you remember I called a top in Apple when we hit about 650. I also repeated that call when we hit 700 saying that this was a unsustainable bubble. Um, a lot of people ask me well where should I buy and I've repeated myself saying you should not buy this stock. Uh, this stock is crashing, has a long way to go down. And uh, you can see we hit 390. Now what is so fascinating about this chart and we're going to uh, talk about fake markets and real markets here is that uh, some of the action that we've seen in the Apple stock here, we're going to zoom in here and take a much closer look so we can get the candlesticks. Uh, what's very interesting is if we look real closely at this candlestick activity here, you can see the dates starting in about the beginning of February and uh, I'm not going to use the net Denny of volume because it's not uh, accurate but uh, you can go to Yahoo and get the, the volume on it but you can see here uh, these are not any known recognized candlestick formations. I don't even know what the terms are for these. Uh, perhaps you would call them false signal candles. But you can see here, this is no longer a real market. This is a fake government market that you're looking at here. Uh, these are not real traders. These are not real prices. There simply is no demand for this stock. So one observing this type of activity would have to conclude that uh, these are uh, computer prices set uh, strictly by fiat and uh, one would probably conclude that a collapse is in the offing after seeing this sort of anomalous activity. We see that collapse here. Massive air pockets in price. So these are after hours uh, pockets. Uh, why the price is changing dramatically uh, without any trading. So that's what you have to remember that it's the trading, the buying and selling of a security that determines the price. These prices are being set by fiat. These are fake prices. So we're seeing the breakdown of paper markets across the board, not just in gold and silver, but in stocks. This is a perfect example of a fake market. Fake markets are things you see uh, when you have economic shortages and economic surpluses. Uh, when the government is interfering in markets. And we'll see that here. I, I have covered this definition many times. I'm going to cover it again because people need to understand how supply and demand works and how it is interfered with by the government. Economic shortage is a term describing a disparity between the amount demanded for a product or service and the amount supplied in a market. Specifically, a shortage occurs when there is excess demand, therefore it is the opposite of a surplus. Economic short shortages are related to price when the price of an item is set below the going rate determined by supply and demand. So you can see there's a hint at the fact that there's a market interference going on. There will be a shortage. In most cases, a shortage will compel firms to increase the price of a product until it reaches market equilibrium. Sometimes, however, external forces cause more permanent shortages. In other words, there is something preventing prices from rising or otherwise keeping supply and demand balanced. So you can see that when you see shortages in a market, then you know you have something that's outside of the market that's interfering in price. Now, there are examples that are cited. The best example we can use is the USSR. We're now living in the USSA, a country where central planners have determined that they 
are going to set prices, not markets. And you can see here in the example of the former Soviet Union. In the former Soviet Union during the 1980s, prices were artificially low by fiat, i.e. high prices were outlawed. Soviet citizens waited in line or queued for various price controlled goods and services such as cars, apartments or other or some types of clothing. From the point of view of those waiting in line, such goods were in perpetual short supply. Some of them were willing and able to pay more than the official price ceiling but were legally prohibited from doing so. This method for determining the allocation of goods in short supply is known as rationing. Now let's get to some anecdotal information. I've received a number of emails, videos, all kinds of stuff. Let's start with an email that we have from a viewer who is a person who uses Goldmart. This is the email reply they received. Greetings. We are writing to inform you that currently we are experiencing some delays in processing most silver bullion orders due to the recent surge of volume and production issues from the top down. There currently are no delays for gold bullion products, but some minor delays as our shipping department is backed up and we are working hard to get back to our standard processing time. So uh, to translate that for you, uh, some of the gold bullion orders are delayed because the silver bullion uh, has overwhelmed them. For this reason, we clearly post our typical processing times through our, throughout our website. We use the word typical for a reason because sometimes atypical situations like the one we are currently experiencing arise. Right now, there is a major production and supply problem for silver bullion at the U.S. and Royal Canadian Mints as well as many of the private mints we distribute silver products for. These delays have created inventory gaps, which is, have led us to adjust the status of many silver bullion products as being delayed or out of stock. And it goes on. I'll go ahead and uh, get a link to that and post that for you. So let's listen to a video of someone who is on the ground uh, experiencing these delays. And uh, we'll let him tell you. Anyhow, um, I simply asked the fellow, um, I said to him, I'd like to buy five 2013 silver maple leaf coins. He looked at me and he said, we don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I stood there. My, it was like my jaw dropped straight open and my eyes were bugging out of my head. And I said to him, you don't have any silver maple leafs right now? And he said, no, we're hoping to have them by Wednesday. <laughs> I started laughing like a crazy fool as I, walk, as I was walking out the, this, this business place. And the people th that were behind me were starting to chuckle as well. <laughs> so that's just one place that I walked in today that has no silver maple leaf coins. Um, then I visited another dealer. Uh, in the same town, White Rock, British Columbia, not too far away from the first dealer. Um, this next dealer is called Express Gold Limited. I walked in there uh, and I said the same thing. I'd like to buy five silver maple leaf coins, 2013s. They said, we don't have any. We're hoping to have them by this Friday. <laughs> So anyway, I had a nice little conversation with the gentleman behind the uh, bulletproof glass at, <laughs> at this location, and we chuckled, and we, we kind of knew what was going on anyway. He knew what was going on. I knew what was going on. Put it this way. Dealers do not want to sell right now because if they sell, they are taking losses. Okay, so that's an important point. We want to think about that point. We're going to get to the uh, anecdotal information from Jim Willie, but let's think about this point that dealers don't want to sell 
they don't want to take a loss on their inventory. So they have to wait for inventory to come in that's purchased at the lower prices so they can go ahead and sell. Well, the first observation I want to make about that is these people are in the business of buying and selling silver bullion. So uh, if they simply stop selling it, then it's not going to be a very long time before they simply go out of business. Because if they're not buying and selling, uh, then uh, what are they doing? Now the other point is that we are often told that bullion dealers or coin shops are not interested in the price direction of gold and silver. They're interested in making money on the spread. Well, if they're trying to make money on the spread, then why don't they just sell to people the silver that they've got in uh, at a little bit higher than the price they paid and uh, capture that spread. Well, the obvious answer is going to be there isn't any silver bullion coming in. There aren't any people walking in and selling their maple leaves, so they don't have any maple leaves to sell. So that brings up the very important question of who is determining prices in the silver market. Obviously, the physical silver buyers and sellers are not determining the prices. The prices are being determined in a fake market, a market that has nothing to do with the amount of gold and silver that's available because they're not selling gold and silver, they're selling fake gold and silver. So just as we see in the Apple chart, the government is propping up the price of a fake uh, market, an asset that no one wants, a piece of paper that is essentially worthless when this entire system collapses, uh, we can see that there isn't any interest in it, so the government has to pony up these fake numbers, and that's why you have these gaps between the volume that doesn't exist. On the other hand, with a real market, with real silver, uh, we don't have any available because the real thing isn't determining price. So. We know these are fake markets. There's no question they're fake markets. Now let's look at some of the information from Jim Willie. Uh, Jim Willie, Golden Jackass, information from his April Hat Trick letter. Physical gold premiums will be $500 or more in the near future. Silver 40%. Dealers sold out now. So Jim has been reporting that around the world, if you want to buy physical gold and silver, you're actually paying a very, very large premium. Jim Willie, the golden jackass and writer of the hat trick letter, is allowing me to publish a little of his April subscriber hat trick letter. Jim emailed me this information today along with the article. Premiums for gold purchases will rise quickly. The process has already begun. The gold premium will eventually be $500 to $600 per ounce like in a couple of months, maybe a little longer. The divergence will be visible in real time for gold. But for silver, it is already 40%. Public defiance will rise against the bankers, like with premiums imposed. Watch out for lawsuits related to the allocated gold accounts. Watch the Baffin investigation against Deutsche Bank, where officials are signing in a chorus dollar signs. A client close to gold trade in Dubai, United Arab Emirates has offered to provide a regular update on the DBX gold price. My hope is to be updated almost daily, but that is asking too much since he's busy running an office. The premium reading is like an EKG for a man suffering a heart attack with monitors attached. He wrote on Friday and again on Saturday shooting updates. He wrote, no more physical AU available in Dubai. The big refineries tell people they might be able to fill orders for 100 kilogram bars in a week or two, but they might not be bound to the screen price premium now $18 over spot gold and price rising uh, on Friday. We shall see $500 over spot not before long. Investment grade silver is already trading at 40% over spot if you want physical in volume. Saturday here in DXB and the premium is now $25. There is no physical anywhere. Now the premium is $30 one hour later. 
For newbies, AU means gold and AG means silver. Some simple math permits one to conclude that a $500 premium could arrive in 50 days if it comes at $10 per day. My belief is that the full premium will come more quickly as the jumps will tend to not be linear. The traders in control of scarce inventory will sense the injustice and smell the destination of a true valid gold price. So uh, now he documents here the physical demand, it's off the charts. We are in the midst of experiencing two of the most radical weeks in the history of the precious metals markets. Paper prices for gold and silver, those prices determined by the fraudulently managed commodities exchanges, namely the COMEX and the LBMA, and regulated by the equally corrupt and complicit CFTC, have been driven into the basement. Simultaneously, the available physical supplies of precious metals, especially silver, have suddenly nearly disappeared. Some of the most extreme shortages for silver in memory have caused premiums for all types of bullion and coins to skyrocket. Nearly all major wholesalers in the United States, and for that matter, the world, are completely out of stock for smaller denominated silver rounds and bars with no projected delivery dates in sight. This phenomenon is a worldwide event. Here is a brief overview of the extraordinary world events highlighting the tremendous surge in precious metals demand. India I've already covered that story. Last week the highly reputable Business Standard of India reported that there are acute shortages of gold in southern India. Major jewelry manufacturer centers in southern India are facing an acute shortage of gold ahead of the wedding season. Thailand, U.S. expatriates living in Bangkok are reporting that gold dealers in that city are completely out of bullion products other than minor amounts of jewelry. These reports are stating that there is not one ounce of gold bullion available for sale. Dealers are taking orders, but these are limited to 2.5 ounces per person. China, gold demand is surging. China's domestic gold consumption is outpacing its internal production 5.5 to 1. China's mining output was up 5.8% in 2011, but its domestic consumption of the yellow metal has increased by 33%. Hong Kong, reports from Hong Kong have seen lineups out the doors of precious metal dealers. Europe, Dutch banks shut down gold deliveries. Major German auto manufacturers are hoarding silver. It's being reported from Switzerland that the world famous German automaker is now resorting to storing thousands of pounds of 0.999 fine silver for future shortages. Switzerland to buy a stunning 1,000 tons of physical gold, question mark. United States, 16% of annual U.S. silver production vaporized in mine collapse. U.S. Mint reports massive silver sales, and it goes on and on and on and on. So it appears that the strategy of the banksters to rig the silver and gold markets by crashing them and taking out the paper longs has actually backfired as the physical silver market has gone into shortage. Now again, a shortage can only occur when there's an interference in a market. So the silver market is the most import, important market right now in regards to the ma manipulation that the banksters are running. Um, we're covering on the blog very, very important story that uh, May 1st is going to be the day when the silver stackers attempt to take down the banksters. Uh, this video, Truth Rises, Coordinated Strike Against the banksters. You can see here that this video has 130,000 views. It was posted on April 17th. This is an attempt to get the silver stackers to join together and uh, a lot of people are poo-pooing this but this is a very important uh, 
operation here to try to send a message to the manipulators of the silver market that uh, the physical stackers of silver are ultimately going to determine the price. As I pointed out in the comments on this video, that uh, if uh, just a small number of people, uh, just the number of people that I project will be 200,000 that will have watched this video. If those people, 200,000 people, bought one monster box of silver, now that's pretty high, but there's some fairly wealthy people as well here, so I don't know what the average will be, but if 200,000 people bought a monster box of silver on May 1st, that is 100 million ounces of silver. That's twice the annual mining supply in the United States. That would absolutely break the power of the banksters, and uh, we would be looking at an end game. And we'll talk to you next time.